right, go over uh, exam two. For those in uh, EMAG in fall of 2022, I changed up question two a little bit. And question three, I'm doing a completely different uh, capacitor, so y'all can see something a little different. Um, first question is the same, pretty much what we had. Um, but let's talk about these equations a little bit. So, it's pretty much broken up into two portions. So we have this right here. Uh, this solves for the distance of the stub from the uh, load. And this essentially solves for the real component. And this portion here solves for the imaginary portion and gives us the length of the stub. Um, as you can see here, uh, you'll only use either one or the other of these depending on if you're needing a short circuited stub or open circuited stub and that is denoted by the S and O. Um, so yeah, um, really the only thing you need to start out with these equations is uh, what is gamma. As you can see right here, that's where we'll start, we'll go through it all. Uh, with that you can solve the whole thing. Um, so, the question says, a single stub impedance matching method is used to match an antenna with impedance ZA, 73 minus J, 27.5, uh, to a, a Z naught of 50. Um, due to the structure, transmission line segment, then 0.7 lambda of the antenna is not accessible. So, ZA is essentially just a load. Z, uh, the transmission line impedance Z naught is 50 and 0.7 lambda. So remember we start zero here. So we'll just call this an arbitrary 0.7 lambda right here. And we cannot leave have a stub in this section. Alright, so first needs to solve for our gamma. As you know, gamma is simply just ZL minus Z naught over ZL plus Z naught. Just plug this in. And it gives you a value of 0 0.225697 minus J. 0 0.173117 ohms. Um, but the equation asks for the magnitude of gamma, which is essentially just square root of the real squared plus the imaginary squared. So this is equal to a value of 0 0.28444. And theta of gamma, which we also need, is arctan of the imaginary over the real. So that is just J0.173117 over 0 0.225697. This gives us a value of negative zero. 0.654313. We'll need this for later. We'll also need, let's see, we need this value and we need this value for later. Oh my god. Alright, so from here we need to solve for our first equation here, which is data prime is just inverse cosine of our negative uh, magnitude of gamma. So theta prime is equal to 
Um, so you'll see in the equation we have a plus and a minus sign. Uh, that is for this and this. Um, and they're just two different cases for figuring out the plus and minus of our uh, distance from the load. Alright, so from here, just plug this in, this on negative 1, of our negative gamma, this will give us a value, I'm going to write this as plus minus 1.85922, um, Swatcha doesn't like this denotation for some reason, but um, I find it just easy, so I know when I input it. Alright, so we're going to start with our first case of D1. And I'm going to denote it with a plus sign. And that plus sign just tells me that I'm using the positive value of data prime. And as we saw, our equation is this lambda over 4 pi times theta gamma which we solved for minus theta prime which we solved for um, since our equation did not give us any kind of say like time varying voltage sinusoidal equation or anything of the matter we cannot solve for any kind of lambda so lambda is just arbitrary in this situation so when we'll actually solve this we'll just do uh, theta gamma minus theta prime and divide that by 4 pi and our equation will just have a our answer will just have a lambda on the end so that will look something like this for our d1 for d1 is equal to lambda over 4 pi times our theta gamma minus our positive value of theta prime. Now give us a value of negative 0 0.200 lambda. So obviously this isn't a real distance that we can use. And since our uh, the magnitude of our impedance is the same every lambda over 2. We're going to add lambda over 2 till we get a value that we can use. So also remember that our condition is that it has to be at least 0.7 lambda. So we're going to have to add until we get a value that is greater than or equal to 0.7 lambda. And for our two cases we're going to choose the shortest one that satisfies that condition. So here adding, uh, let's see, so negative point two zero zero two one plus since lambda is just a variable, we're just adding point five here, and that just gives us point two nine nine seven nine. That's not big enough. So let's add another lambda over two plus another point five. That gives us a value of 0 0.79979. This satisfies our condition of uh, point set being greater than 0.7 lambda. So we're going to stop there and we're going to try the second case. See what we get with that. So for the second case, uh, oh my goodness, why is it doing that? What is going on? Alright, so D2, I'm going to denote this with a negative sign. Again, that is because, as we had here, I'm going to be using the negative value of theta prime. So I'll, I'll just plug that into this equation.
is this theta gamma, which we know from earlier, minus negative theta prime. This will give us a value of 0 0.09588 lambda. Again, it's not greater than 0.7 lambda, so let's add lambda root 2. And that will give us a value of 1.09588 lambda. So that is greater than our 0.7 lambda, and it is obviously positive. So now we need to choose the best one to use. And that will be this one because it is the shortest. It is the closest to the load, and that is what we want. So that will be the distance uh, from the load that our stub will be at. And that solves the real portion of our impedance. And from here, we now need to solve the uh, imaginary portion. So we're going to start with this equation right here, B of S. Um, and we're going to be using things that we've already used. We have a magnitude of gamma, and we're, uh, we need a uh, theta prime. Um, we learned that we we're using the positive theta prime because that gives us the closest value. And again, we're just using another magnitude. This is just an easy plug and chug. Plugging all that in, that'll give us a B of S equal to. 0.5934. Alright, from here, we're going to plug this into this. Z of S, essentially the impedance of the stub, which is Z naught, our characteristic impedance, 50 over imaginary of B of S, which is our 0 This is simply equal to negative J84.2602 Alright, and then lastly, the last thing we're going to plug this in is so we have two choices uh, short stub and open stub short circuited I mean question tells us right here that we're using short circuited stub, so we're going to use L of S. And as you'll notice, the only thing that's different is um, the ZS and the Z not flip. So just another simple plug and chug. This will just be L of S is equal to lambda over 2, simply just a variable. Inverse tan of ZS, which is negative J84.2602, over J50, gives us a value of negative 0.164764. Lambda. So obviously we can't have a negative valued link. So again, what we're going to do is just add lambda over 2. So we get a real value. And then we're we can add the root. And this will just come out to 0.33523. Lambda, and this is units of meters. And that's that. Uh, pretty simple, just plug and chug. Alright, so that's it for that one.
So for this question, similar to question number two that was given in the other test review, is uh, we're just doing boundary conditions. And we're given voltage in medium one, which is in the top. Uh, we know the electric conductivity constants of 2 and 8.2 respectively. And we add the surface charge density of this colorful portion right here along our uh, x-axis. And that's just a conductive plate that is going to uh, affect the normal component of our uh, electric field in E2. Alright, so first let's try to solve for uh, electric field and substrate 1. Uh, so we know from uh, vector calculus is that E is equal to negative del of V, where del is simply just partial derivatives of our E field. And it's just going to have, it's going to flip the sign. Alright, um, so this is just pretty simple. Um, doing So doing this, using this right here, partial derivatives of each of these, they'll have the vector components on it. Signs will flip, which is just simply 2x hat minus 3y hat plus 7z hat. And this is volts. This is a E1. Pretty simple. Um, from there, so since we have the electric field in substrate one, let's solve for the electric field in substrate two. So we know that we have on our chapter four electrostatics for boundary conditions. We know that. E1 of t equals E2 of t. You know that E1 of n, epsilon 1, uh, minus E2 of n, to equal to rho of s. This is straight from the book. Um, our normal component is our z component. It is what travels through here this way and our tangential components would, are, would be our x and y uh, components. They do not travel through the, the pretty looking uh, conductive plate along the x-axis or parallel to it. Alright so um, also sometimes you don't you won't have a conductive plate in the middle would just be two mediums. In that case, surface charge density is zero. So when that is zero, you have E1 of n, epsilon is equal to E2 of n, epsilon 2. But in this question, we have a row S, so we're going to use this one to help solve for um, electric field and substrate 2. Um, since our tangential components are the same, given right here, that means our x and y components will be the same. So the only thing that's going to change here is the z component. So if we plug that in and solve for the 2 of n is equal to E1 of N minus rho of S. Got something. 
you want it then, times epsilon 1 times rho of x divided by epsilon 2. Um, this simply just gives us plug and chug we're given this 4 times 10 negative 11 is our row of s we're given uh, we solve for e1 which is our just our 7 here and our epsilon 1 is 2 e naught and our epsilon 2 is 8.2 e naught so just plugging that in we get a value of 1.15627 and since it's the normal component, it's a z hat. Plugging all that in, why does it do that? And we're going to get e2. Two x minus three y hat plus one point one five six three seven z hat. And that is our E field and substrate 2. Alright, so next, let's try to solve for a voltage that goes from 0.1, let's see, this right here. Let's solve for this voltage. So the x and y's are the same, so that doesn't affect anything. So the only thing that changes is this z component from negative 2 to 3. And that is essentially going from here to here. So let's do this over here. So as we know, from Maxwell's oh my god, from Maxwell's equations, e equals to negative rho e dot e l. Uh, this is a line integral, which would be from negative 2 to 3 however uh, our ethyl is not the same going from negative 2 to 3 so we need to break this up into two pieces uh, one with respect to E1 and one with respect to E2 so respect to E2 we'll start there from negative, negative 2 to 0 is where our conductive plate is DL minus Y. We want a kind of DL, and this goes from zero to three. Sorry, this keyboard to not disappear. There it goes. Um, and then this simply just no we'll factor out this negative. Essentially, just gives us a one point. One five six seven seven two minus negative two. Let's use a two. Plus seven three minus zero. And this gives us a value of Three point three one two seven four. This would be negative volts because of minus sign here. And that's that. 
So really all you need for this solving this equations here is uh, knowing the relationship between E and V and knowing your boundary conditions. So for the third question, you can do this capacitor problem here. Uh, I kind of wrote out to the side what you're given. Uh, so in these equations, these questions that I've seen, uh, he gives you pretty much all the electric permittivity constants. The only thing that really seems to change is the voltage. Um, if he's going to give you the voltage, or he may give you uh, the electric field in one of the mediums, or maybe he'll give you the charge on the top plate, and you use uh, equations to solve from there. Um, Alright, so with this one, let's see. He asks us to solve the uh, electric field first. Alright, so since we know voltage, um, let's see. So this is a distance of 3D. D is 10 to negative 3, which is just a millimeter. The um, thing about voltage is it is always the same going across the capacitor no matter what. It doesn't matter if there's one medium, like you have here on the left side, or if there's two, three, four, five mediums on the right side. It makes no difference. Um, and then as we saw earlier, we know the relationship between V and E. So we can solve. So, let's see. Maxwell's equations tells us that voltage is equal to the negative uh, line integral of the electric field, um, which gives, a, gives us a general um, relationship of V equal to E times D. Um, there's a lot of algebraic equations that you can derive from Maxwell's equations that you can use to solve these problems, but to watch it wants you to know the, the vector calculus way, and it will probably ask you to know it. You can still use the algebraic ways to do it, but um, you need to at least know how to answer it, what, what, it, what all this means. So as you can see here, Zach asking for the vector. So as we know, so we have our z-axis here, right? So our normal component is the z-axis component. And that's what's going to be changing. We know our E field goes down. And it says our z is positive in this direction going up. So that tells us our value is going to be negative, right? All right, so let's start with medium 1, which is the one on the left. This is medium one. So using this equation, we have E1 E1 is equal to negative integral of zero. So three times ten negative three. E1. Uh, this isn't equal, this is just like a, what we're solving for. This is equal to 100 volts, which is what is our V of V, which was given. And so, solving this, you get 100 equals. Thank you.
e1 equal to negative z hat 333.33 kilovolts per meter. Alright, next, um, e2, e3. So, similar to our boundary conditions earlier, you can write expression, um, well, not our boundary condition. Um, so, our voltage across 2 and 3 is the same as it is across um, a substrate 1. So, we can write an equation that looks like this. Where v of b is equal to uh, e2 times 2d plus e3 times d. As because this d is 2d, those are our lengths. Alright, so we have an equation with two unknowns. So obviously we can't solve that, so we need another equation to help us solve this. Like the last qu uh, question, we use boundary conditions. We know that the normal component uh, of E2 and E3 have a relationship. That relationship being E2 of N is F1, 2 equal to E3 of N, F1, 3. So we can solve for this. Um, and just solve for E2 of N. Uh, since there is no conducting plate between them, rho of s is zero. Don't have to worry about that. Kind of how we talked about in the last question. So we can plug this this value here into e2 of or e2 of n in our equation over here on the left, right? So that will rewrite this equation as v of b is equal to 3 of n times epsilon 3 over epsilon 2 times 2d plus epsilon 3 times d. Uh, this is a normal component. Uh, let's see. Alright, so we can factor out e3 of n and divide what's left over uh, to VB. And that will give us a solution for E3 of N. And that will look something like this. So we'll have E3 of N equal to 100, which is our voltage, divided by epsilon 3 plus 2 times 2d plus d. Plugging and chugging with our given values since we have all of those. We have uh, the number of 2.5 kilovolts per meter. Since we know the normal component of our E fields here is in the negative z direction, we can write that our E field for E of 3 is equal to negative Z hat 2.5 K volts per meter. Cool. Alright, so with that we can easily solve for E2 of N by going back to this equation right here. Since we now know E3 of N, we know this, we know this, we can solve for E2 of N. So, E2 just comes out to negative C hat 3.75 kilovolts per meter. Alright, so that's it, part A. So, part B, 
is uh, determining the total charge polarity at the top plate QT. So all we have so far is the voltage in the electric field. So how can we get to charge from here? So from Maxwell's equations, we have <coughs> we know that capacitance is equal to the surface integral of our electric field times the electric permittivity constant dotted with ds over our line integral negative line integral of E dotted with DL. Alright. So what can we get from this? Well, an integral of a surface is essentially just an area, right? So this top portion will come out to something like this. E times E times A. And we already know this one down here. This is simply just an expression for voltage. All right. So something we know from the boundary conditions, uh, questions in two and in the part one of this, was that remember we had equations that you wanted in epsilon one. Then epsilon two is rho of s. That's essentially what's going on right here. So this can be rewritten as surface charge times area over voltage. And this should uh, be something you know you can work with. So we know surface charge density is coulombs per meter squared, and area is just meters squared. These cross out and we have coulombs. Well coulombs is the units for oh, for charge. We have Q over V is equal to C. That's something we can work with right here. Okay. Um, another equation we can actually get from this Another way we can rewrite this is we go back and look at this portion real quick. So we already know that, let's look at this right here. So voltage, as we saw earlier, is just E times D, right? That was really bad. So let's let's write this as so E times E A over E times D. Well these E's can just cross out, right? That just leaves us with wow, what is going on? Like? Okay, e times A over D is equal to our capacitance. So we don't even need an ethyl to solve for capacitance. We just need to know electric permittivity constant, the area. And our uh, distance. Alright, so let's go back to solving... Um, So let's go back to solving for the charge. Yeah, let me just set this real quick. So this is an equation that's good to know. This is a good equation to know. Mm. This is good to know. Those are helpful. So it'll help you uh, get places, these questions. But if you want to solve for the charge, you can just use this equation right here. So we know the voltage, we just need to find the capacitance. 
but we know we can find the capacitance with this stuff right here, which we have all of them. We have the e uh, electric permittivity, and we have the area, we have the distance. So let's do that. So let's just go right into it. Let's do it. Let's do pink this time. So C1 is simply just uh, E1, don't forget E0. Uh, area is divided by 2. So the reason why it's area divided by 2, so the area given for this is for this whole length. But medium 1 is just half of it. So we're going to divide that area in 2. It tells us that it's half with this W over 2. So, and divide that by 3D. And that will give us an answer if you plug this all in of 19.1837 picofarads. Do the same thing for C2. C2, E2, E0, area over 2, over 2D. Simply, this is because, wow, uh, this is alright. Not want to. It doesn't want to minimize. This is because the the height of uh, a substrate is 2D. Um, and this will give us an answer of 44.27 picofarads. Pico is just 10 to negative 12. I'm sure, you already know that though. And again, C3 equals E3, E0, times area divided by 2, divided by D, is equal to 32.81 picofarads. So, um, so now that we have that, we need to solve for the uh, equivalent capacitance. So, as we know, capacitors in series add like resistors in parallel, and since they're both related to medium one, we need to do C2 and C3 first. And this will just look like something like C2 times C3 over C2 plus C3. Or if you like this way better, you can do it like 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Doesn't matter, both of them work. So, C2, 3. Give us a value of 52.386 picofarads. Since C1 is in parallel with that, that is simply just adding. So we're going to add C1, and that will give us an equivalent capacitance of. Oh, I told you the wrong thing, sorry. Um, So this is our total, that is our equivalent capacitance, and what you would get with doing uh, C2 and C3 in series, uh, you should get a value of 33.2025 picofarads. Sorry about that. Um, this is C2. Now, as we had earlier, 
the whole reason why we did this was because we have this equation right here. We now have the uh, C, we now have a V, so we can get the charge. Charge is just simply C times V. Let's go to blue. So, here at the top, it's equal to C times V, which is equal to 2.386 times 10, 12 times 100. You can just think that at, think of that as 10 to the 2. Uh, with the exponents, you know, you can just add them. That gives you a value of 52.386 times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs. Or, you can write this as 5.2386 million coulombs. In other words, 10 to the negative 9. There's our charge, and that is um, charge at the top. So it also asks for the polarity. Polarity is positive at the top, as given by the battery here. This is positive, positive charges. Here is a negative, negative charges here on the bottom. Uh, but it's here on the bottom, it's the same magnitude. Just your sign. Um, if you ever see conductive plate here, uh, just know that Q is equal to zero, so that charge is zero. Um, let's see. All right. So the last question is determine capacitance. Well, we already did that to solve for the charge. So I question was this this right here that's it so that's all of that uh, remember this stuff right here is pretty great you need to know these derivations understand it that's where all this stuff comes from and then these this couple that are circled here these are all really important. Use these to solve all of these. So yeah, um, hope you learned something. Hope I was able to help you. And uh, best of luck on your test.